welcome to Gothic Reviews. This is our combined unboxing haul from eBay and Etsy. Our unboxing maybe can start with uh, an unboxing of Pimpernel Vintage Toys, Gentle Trolls. Here we have Trollus. I don't know if they're really gentle since they're big hair dudes with fat attitudes. Well, that's only too, I think, for Nobody's a Trollus just source. used to gentling the beasts, so they're always gentle for him, like... Yes, the, everybody's gentle for me. But I think Sven Troll somehow is more gentle than Trollosaurus because Trollosaurus here on the box is described as somebody who feeds on trolls. So he is probably less gentle. His favorite food includes trolls with yummy crunch juice in their tummies. <laughs> but he, he likes to eat the cute ones. Yes, he has a good uh, taste. This shop um, is having a sale now and they're merging. They're starting a different shop, so they're having a sale. We got this for $8, brand new in the box, and it's like 30 used on eBay and other places, so it's amazing. And I guess we can put up links to both. Yes. And check them out. These are from the early 90s. And I started opening it, and then Gomez is like, I said, you know what? This is like opening history. I'm popping open a toy from like 92. And Gomez is like, wait, wait, do it on camera then. Like, okay. So I stopped. Just for you guys, so we can open history together. And I'm not really into the collecting because I don't care what people think. When you keep it in the box, you can't see all of it. Even if you have perfect vision, the box is hiding some of it. You can't really enjoy it. Open your toys and play with them, collectors. You can still keep them and collect them. So, there. That was my soapbox spiel that, you know, just needs to be said. Okay. These are different because you know how a lot of the times you have that little window box, the clear thing somehow, or the blister pack on the packaging? I had never seen any that didn't have any, like, and it was from the 90s, and they had them in the 80s toys, so this is just a whole all-around cardboard box, and it shows, I think, doesn't it show some of the other tools? Gomez, if you want to go over. Yeah, the other trolls. The other trolls. What have we here? Big, battle trolls. Uh, let's see. Yes, big hair dudes with bad attitudes is the writing that my teacher was referring to. And there is, it mentions the Sven troll being inside. I had to get him because, you know, the Norse have the trolls anyway, like as their monsters. And they named this one Sven, so he's like a Viking troll, which is just awesome. Yes, Sven is a good name. I think it's, uh, in a sense, a generic name for a man in ancient Swedish, like in the runes and stuff. So uh, it's an appropriate name for a troll. And uh, I don't think it mentions any oh, other... Let's see. Here are some instructions oh, how instructions. to okay. fire log launcher, which is useful to know because these days we need manuals for stuff because they're complex. So this diagram seems to be more handy than many more complex equipment that I've seen recently. Yes, back in the day they knew how to give good instructions, people. <laughs> yeah. It's like now you have uh, a shaver and like all kinds of like phone uh, phone uh, assemblies and radio and everything. Everything you buy is like complex these days. It's like, how do I use that? Why, why am I seeing stuff? I had music on and then like... I was rocking out 90s music, I think it was from 1990, ACDC, Razor's Edge, because we're unboxing 90s toys, so I was being cute, and then my music stopped. Okay. So beautiful, Razor's Edge was based on a metaphysical novel of the 60s, I believe, so ACDC was inspired, well, just like we are by mythology and such. Yes, they're very cool like that. Okay, I'm opening Sven first, is that cool? Yes. Alright, check, did you want to open him, or did you want to open the, we were each to open one, I don't care. Uh, you go ahead and open and I'll uh, arrange for good camera angles. Very well. Alright, this is also opening history, you guys. This is like a time capsule. It's so exciting. I can't wait till I buy one from the 50s and pop it open. That'll be a super time capsule. But this is awesome because it's a start. I've never seen toys packaged this way. It's packaged like in a, in a closed box. It's not inside the blister pack and then they're inside these little packs. It's very interesting. I'm sure other people are like, come on, Morticia, really? But I haven't seen it, okay? He looks nice. Yes, he has stuff with him, and I'm trying to be careful and not have it. You know what? I love the fact that it's not like, um, 
you know, all taped down and everything and tied and stuff. That's nice. But then the packs at least keep it from going everywhere. So, hey, that's a nice idea. It's too bad it wasn't continued to be implemented. I had Frank and Troll at one point. I got used and I guess I sold him. But he's got the, he's so Viking. Like the way the Viking trolls look. We have a little mini toy Viking troll from Popple or somewhere that we'll show one day. But he's also got the beard. He's got the helmet though. But this one has the horns. It's so cute. Brilliant. It is. And the beard, I guess. Yeah. All white. Yeah. And like, mm, these look like horns. I don't see his ear. Oh, maybe the ears. They, huh. I guess they used to be close to the ears, I think. I know. Like, maybe it's just kind of hidden in his. Maybe the horns are more important. Yeah, he's just cool. Like, check him out. And he's got like, um, no shoes. He's just chilling with Appropriate his... Appropriate for a troll because he's supposed to be in nature. Of course, the Viking trolls mainly derived probably from a, a type of Jotuns in mythology. They were creatures of nature and natural elements like the snow, the air, and stuff like that. Sometimes presented good challenges for the god Thor. But this one seems too friendly. I assume that Sven, he's... Yes, he is. Yeah, he looks too friendly to really be menacing. He probably would be an ally. Of this the must Nordic. be the log launcher. It's got a claw thing. And the thing, and then the thing. I like all the yeah. things. Um, uh, that seems maybe like a mace or something at or the something. end. I had to stick it in or it can go in that side. Whatever, okay. And then it's held in this claw thing. <laughs> okay, it's probably not right, but I'm not trying to take too long and be boring. But he will stand up by himself. And then we're popping open. You know what? This is Trollosaurus, and I, I, I'm fascinated by dinosaurs, but it seems like in dinosaur toys they keep making the same few. And there are actual YouTube videos that show all these dinosaurs and prehistoric life that we don't even know about. Like, if you look that up, you won't even know they existed. Because the toys they produce are just the same few over and over and over. So, dinosaurs can bore me, but this guy is like a troll dinosaur, so you have to love... <laughs> That and he's got the troll hair. Ooh. <laughs> he's Sorry, so I got brilliant. distracted by ACDC. ACDC hey, is it also works. Brilliant. It it's works. Work. Yeah, it works for a troll dinosaur. They would love it. They would be like, maybe he could charge to the sounds of their music. Yeah, they'd be like, cool. <laughs> like okay. a battle march. But look, he has ears. Yes. Can you see that with the camera? Yes. Cute little ears, like macaroni and cheese shells. I'm not hungry because <laughs> I'm not. Okay, but he's got like a um. Saddle looking thing on his back? Uh, um, yes. Appropriate his little, and he's got flat things for Sven's feet. And he's got little, like, um, like a spike, you know, a few ridges down here. And scales. A troll dinosaur is just so cool. I saw this on this um, Obscure Toy Reviews channel that we will leave a link to because they reviewed him too. But we're showing you other toys as well. And it's just such a cool toy that I had to do it. Um, nothing was lacking in. The obscure toy reviews review at all, but again, I just I had to break my rule and do this one because it's in a haul. So anyway, he stands on him really well. He actually fits. Back in the day, they made toys actually that fit. So this is the launching log thing thing because nothing else came. See, it's a log. It looks like it's a tree branch with little nodules. See yeah. That? And it's got a claw and something in it that launches out and probably kills other little innocent trolls. Yeah, that something looks like one of those weapons, or I guess. Where does it go? Oops, I think I just launched it into the floor. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I got it. Okay, so what it is is you just push it out with this other, once you put this in, then you stick the claw through it and it pushes it out and launches it, which I don't like my stuff to fly across the room specifically, so I'm sure somebody will tell me if I'm doing it wrong, but I'm trying not to take too long. And As South Park says, don't screw around, kitties. Okay, I think this should go on his arm. Yeah, like a little falcon, but it's a weapon instead. Oh, yeah. Morticia's nearsighted self figured it out. Look, look. Well done, Morticia. I know, right? Uh, the weapon protruding out of the log is reminiscent of the Labris that itself evolved into a weapon that the Vikings probably used. <gasps> Gomez, when you talk about mythology, because mythology has a place in my heart, it just oh. gets me all, like when, you know, I speak French and stuff for you. Oh, oh. God, Amelia. Oh, shit. 
So go ahead, mythology it up before we show our next toy. Yes, so uh, this weapon is very interesting because uh, eventually developed into the axe of symmetry where this sharp part that the Saxons like to use against the Vikings, I think, where was later the Vikings adapted it where they added a second part to complement this part so that it would be a symmetrical weapon and they would use it in their assaults on the islands of UK in particular the in England itself of course and they would attack Saxon settlements say at the time of uh, maybe Alfred the Great uh, uh, give or take a few hundred years. <laughs> so, yes, sir, he was a few centuries. Yes. <laughs> Guys, I smell the pumpkin coffee in the kitchen still. I wonder if that means I'm going to have to have more. Oh, and uh, with the snake, uh, which snake did you make? Oh, mac and cheese, wasn't it? We don't like... have mac and cheese. I can have pumpkin coffee. I don't have mac and cheese. I understand. It's just <laughs> still aromaing itself from the coffee pot. You know what I mean? Why it did I take this you. and throw it away? When I... uh, because you probably wanted to show it one more time because it's so beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Really? Do we need to show it? Well, I, I, I just did it so quick and cute. Uh, this uh, tool on the box somehow, like, it is... I know the Obscure Toy Review guy was saying that it looks, the colors that look different on the box than it does inside and how it was weird. Yeah, here it reminds me more of that interesting creature from Mario Brothers, the game, where they produced it in the Nature series, which is very interesting and very characteristic, but... I guess it does have a vaguely trollish characteristics too, but it just doesn't look entirely like Sven. Uh, I think Sven... Somebody was saying they make it look different, and then it's like, why do you make the colors different? It's like colors may vary. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to link his channel instead of the review, because um, you can watch it if you want, but his channel is cool. And I knew about these toys because of his channel, and Boglins and some other cool ones we're going to get eventually, so... Um, this one I actually already did pop open, so I time capsuled without you guys. I'm sorry that we're going to show you next. It's the Crypt Keeper Gargoyle from the Crypt Keeper cartoon, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. Because if anyone doesn't know, we collect gargoyles. Let's show them the box first. Yeah. This was easy to pop out. And see, it has the clear little window. But of course, you couldn't see his back and all the cool stuff going on back there. So you still got to open him. But he was nice. Again, back in the day, you could open toys and it was easy. A whiff of the 90s. Are you smelling it? <laughs> well, I could have, but right now I couldn't. <laughs> uh, that was just a metaphorical uh, a representation of a possibility, a real possibility at one point. <laughs> what, that you would smell it? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, the box has... We've had a lot of coffee. Uh, and we enjoyed every bit of it. Probably get more soon. Let's see, does this still smell new? Yeah. Yes, Martisha is very good with the smell. Sometimes Here. she has to guide Oops. me and then I can do it, but just I... Just put your nose on it. There. I did. I still cannot smell it, but I always trust my teacher because she can always smell it and she's <sighs> right. Okay. So, this box features, uh, it starts with a werewolf. Uh, it looks... Who let the wolves out? out. Who? 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 Uh, it's a very groovy werewolf, mostly, except... I'm I don't... a 60s werewolf. I'm groovy. So why are you singing Snoop Doggy Dog about me, man? Because we're foreshadowing the future. <laughs> the future we're living. <laughs> Uh, I like uh, his body build and his position where his arms are raised and close. Uh, I cannot see his face but quite clearly. But you didn't want to buy him. Yeah, that's the problem. I cannot see his face quite as clearly. Well, I'm sure if you bought him, you probably could. I suppose I could, but would I enjoy it or not? Like, I like his ears, but I cannot well, see I'll, his eyes I'll at all. I'll send you a review of him. I'm sure somebody's done it. Very well. I will okay. consider him once again. All right. Uh, then we're moving on, uh, then it calls it a vampire, and I guess it's supposed to be a vampire, but it doesn't... It seems more like a mixture to me of a vampire, a mummy, a zombie, and a Frankenstein monster as is known from uh, the movies rather than the book. Maybe it's a vampire that needs to eat some more. He's uh, not been eating enough. I think he has been Go starved. Go It's okay, dude. Go. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have the charmer of himself, Crypt Keeper. He is, of course, dressed as a gentleman appropriately. Uh, I like his position as a host where his arms are spread widely. He looks cuter in the cartoon than the big 12-inch doll that we reviewed where he's more sinister. Um, but I like all incarnations of him. He's my first boyfriend and I have loyalty and love. We're still really close. Uh, on this version, his hair does not show quite as much. I like him with longer hair. It just seems so delicate and elegant oh, for him. Oh, he is. I know. <laughs> See, Gomez knows. He's so cool, he can't even be jealous. I'm too certain in my own masculinity. Oh, that's good. And abilities. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, mental and, like, intellectual, of course. Uh, and then, uh, we... Are you not confident in your other ones? I think they're good. 
Well, yes, but it sounded cooler like without any windows and stuff like so. I was trying to be like. Oh, you don't want to leave any windows. Uh, well, uh, maybe I do, but like on other channels, so that like it wouldn't sound like weird. Aww, oh shit. God of me. Uh, then in the series we have the mummy. It looks uh, well. It has nice mummy wrappings. Again, the face. I might be tripping today. I admit that, but. Uh, Tripping on coffee. Uh, yes. <laughs> but the face somehow is uh, reminded me more of a zombie. The mummy face does not seem to be as well preserved as you would expect from either. They made them different. I think they weren't using the typical styles. Yes. Except the gargoyle looks typical, which we'll see. But yes. Uh, I think they did Frankenstein. Uh, uh, do I see Frankenstein? Let's see. Yes, Frankenstein is one of them. And they were supposed to, um, in the uh, in the episode with Frankenstein, they specifically were mentioning him as Mary Shelley's creation from the book rather than the movie, but it still didn't look like that. Nobody's ever made an action figure that really looks like... Um, it's on our channel thumbnail, the actual art from the first edition, where he's actually kind of pretty, which, if you read the book, he was intended to be. Yes. Very different from the movie. And we did a book slash movie kind of comparison video a while back, if you guys want to check it out. If you haven't read the book, you need to at least watch the video. It's important. I like because that. Because the book was so much more sophisticated than the movie, and it's a totally different character, really, for both Victor and the creation. And the book had much depth that we, of course, analyzed in our review and comparison uh, of the movie and the book, the movie from 1931. And then in the series we have a zombie. Yeah, there's the Frankenstein monster. He he looks here a little grotesque, more like a Humpty Dumpty of the Gothic world. Humpty Dumpty of the Gothic world. That's different. <laughs> yes. I uh, like that. That's a good quote. Yes, it just seems like such a good characterization. It's good, yes. That's why you're a writer, because you say good things. Ooh, kind of me. Ooh, my shit. And then, See, I have to drop the so, innuendos that he didn't want to drop, so... Yes, it works better <laughs> when somebody else uh, tells immodest things about you. Uh, <laughs> when, instead of when you're doing it yourself, type of thing. <laughs> and then we have a zombie. He somehow looks all green to me, which is okay. And one of his eyes seems to be peeking out over the other. He does retain some of his clothes, which is nice. He might be a tropical zombie to my mind. Yeah, he's like, almost is like, I don't want to see the naked zombie. It's TMI, TMI. <laughs> Uh, yeah, even <laughs> thinking about it begins to melt my mind one bit at a time, just like a zombie mind falling <laughs> off. So shall we move on to the gargoyle then? Um, there is also another version of the Crypt Keeper first that it reminds me actually of the one that uh, like we thought I have with the staff, the Caduceus one. Yeah, uh, he has this figure that we need to show in some of our vintage toys and see if you guys know what it is. It kind of reminds us of a Crypt Keeper mixed with Skeletor and he has this cool staff with like with the winged Caduceus. And a robe and a cowl. It looks like death or something, but we need to show it and see if anybody knows who it is. Yes. And then at last we move to our gargoyle in this series. We showed how it looks on the box. And I think it matches pretty well outside of the box. Let's show him, let's show him, let's show him. Woo! Oops. Woo. <laughs> Here him is in all of his glory. Oddly enough, I don't know why I wasn't as into him as I felt like I should be when I first got him. Because, you know, like nothing's wrong with him. He looks good. I love gargoyles, and he seems like a good standard gargoyle. Maybe he didn't look like any of my characters specifically that I write my gargoyle characters. It wasn't one or the other of them, so maybe it took me a minute. But he was, like, okay, but I couldn't warm up to him for whatever reason, and I couldn't even say why. But the more I play with him, the more I warm up to him. I don't know if you guys have ever had that where, like, you get it, and it's not bad, but then it takes you a while. to like, and you're like, oh, no, I like it, I like it, oh, I really like it. It's like one of those build-up things. And Gomez liked him right away. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, he might have a few, some would call it maybe slightly demonic features, but uh, I don't... He's supposed to scare away demons. Gargoyles yeah. are actually the ones that sit on churches and cathedrals and castles to frighten the demons. And he has cute ears. Show his ears. He's yes, I showed body. his ears. They're <laughs> he doesn't very... have a tail. I wish he had a tail. I like a lion-looking tail that they have sometimes. Let's see on his no, back. Yes. And Mar the back ridges, you know, I like the spikes down the back and the tail, and I wish he had those, but it's okay. His ears appear to me to be like a version of a bat-like, and his wings are also uh, maybe leather, just like a bat would be. Uh, so I would call him like there are of course several types of gargoyles, cat, dog, and other animals, but I, I think of him more as a bat. What about the face though? Um, I think he, to an extent he could be batty too, like because he reminds me of some of those early uh, Nosferatu action figures Nosferatu. from classic. 
which were also bad luck. And I like the, the wing position too because it seems protective, like we said, that it represents the gargoyle function to Where he's raised. Yeah. Okay, and let's do his articulation. His arms and legs move fully up and down like... Oops, am I holding him okay? Did yes. I get too high? Okay. So he could theoretically sit, but then he will fall a little bit, but... They, they move like that. I don't know why they move when you can't really use the movement, like, if that makes any sense. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. Um, yeah, well, they do this kind of thing, but it's not like he'll stand up by or sit by himself. Um, so... So partial articulation? Or? Well, no, it's full, um, in the full up and down, but I mean, what do you do with it? If you sit him, he's going to fall, but yeah. you lean him against something. I guess you could lean him against something. Have him go like that, but you know, if he's sitting against a book or something, yeah, he can sit like this. Um, is that okay? Can you see it? Yes, instead of stand, but then he also stands, no knee um, joints, he just crouches either way, which is fine. I don't care. Um, same with the arms, they stay bent, but they move all the way around if you want to, like, we so they go up, up if you want to have him do that or whatever. Or if you want him to hold them out or be waving like, hey, <laughs> what up? I've been sitting on this castle all day and looking around and nothing's happening. So I just leave him like that usually. But um, And then his, if you press the button on the back, his wings fly and his head moves. So I'll do it from the front too. Now, what would he like to eat? Um, It depends on his mood. Sometimes... He likes McDonald's. <laughs> Sometimes he goes to Denny's, but then people trip, so then he has to like send Dracula to Denny's for him. And Dracula's like, but I can't eat Denny's. He's like, I don't care. Just go get it for me. Just go. <laughs> go, Dracula. I need the Grand Slam with pancakes. And make them fruity pancakes. <laughs> well... Nobody can accuse him of having a bad taste. And then when he doesn't get it, he starts to roar like this and beat his wings. And <laughs> Dracula's like, fine, you're giving me a headache. I'll go get it for you. <laughs> I like these toy reviews. We can be funny. <laughs> yes. Sometimes if I'm doing a, uh, you know, a moth bracelet or whatever, hint, hint, go watch my DIY cool recent moth bracelet. I, I don't know. There's nothing funny to say specifically, so. Yeah. I can, like, play around more sometimes. <laughs> okay, this is a fun goil, and it was fun to pop him open and again, like, release the 90s time capsule. Whee. <laughs> so, this has been, and we got him on eBay, and he was relatively inexpensive, like 10 or 15, even with shipping. So, that's really cool. The battle trolls can be more up in price. I got lucky. I forget to troll Etsy for, I know they do crafts and jewelry and stuff, and, you know, clothes and bags, and I forget to look for toys on Etsy and I know they do vintage they say like crafts and vintage and I always forget the vintage part and so sometimes you can find I usually find the best deals on toys on eBay very rarely Amazon like 2% of the time on Amazon and mostly on um, eBay but sometimes Etsy has even better deals like this for eight bucks this whole set brand new I mean dude that's amazing um I forgot to say that this dinosaur doesn't seem to have articulation oh wait he has this articulation. His upper body moves. Like, he can lean to the side and if he's <laughs> battling and like, eh, eh. Make good but, neck stretches. <laughs> yeah, so he can do this, but that's about all. Which is fine. I don't care. And then Sven has the same, I guess, like, oops. His weapon's just not. Whatever, okay. Um, he's got waist articulation. Sorry, we went back to a different toy because I just realized that he didn't have a lot, so I forgot about it. Like, yeah, the legs don't move, arms don't really move, and the head doesn't. I mean, just that whole, I guess it's like a neck waist. He's so chunky, it's hard to tell where one stops. He just moves there, as does his battle companion. So that's cool. Um, again, and not a complaint. I don't really specifically need a lot of articulation. Um, we collect trolls, and these are just really neat trolls, like unique and unusual. And the general troll series here with the battle trolls they have a bunch of different unique ones like they have a wolfman troll franken troll like this was just my favorite because i love the viking trolls and a dinosaur troll i mean like really how can you get more cool than that if you're a troll collector so so there's sven and trellisaurus from Trillosaurus. pimper now vintage on etsy 
And this is our lovely, lovely gargoyle. He's from Tales. From the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> and all of these are pretty decent prices. You have to hunt for a decent price on the trolls, but the Crypt Keeper, all these toys are pretty low priced right now and well made. So that's kind of nice. So he's got nice muscles too, the gargoyle. He's all strong. Yeah. And not too chunky, but well built. So that's kind of nice. So we hope you've enjoyed our little toy unboxing time capsule from the 90s. And we have lots of other vintage spooky toy reviews, um, past and more relatively recent. Check them out. And our other spooky product reviews. We hope you've enjoyed this video and have a dark day.